What's up, A to Z Sports Doc Talk here on this Friday afternoon discussing the ACL injury with Titans outside linebacker and edge rusher Harold Landry as we do these all the time. It's it's always an unfortunate situation when we do some of these, uh, but we always know that we have really good people to turn to when it comes to uh, diagnosing injuries and helping the fans understand timelines since Mike Vrabel won't give us timelines some general ideas on what uh, athletes for the Titans, for the Preds, for the Vols, whoever, uh, and what they might be going through. But joining us today here on the today's Doc Talk about Harold Landry and his ACL injury is Dr. Christopher Stark, who is a hip and knee replacement preservation and also in sports management, management uh, I'm sorry, sports medicine at the Bone and Joint Institute in Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, so, Dr. Stark, thanks for jumping on here today. Thanks so much, Austin. Great to be here. Absolutely. Appreciate so, it. <clears throat> yeah, so we learned on Thursday that Wednesday in Titans practice, Harold Landry went down with a torn ACL. Now, uh, for us in the media, we noticed Wednesday at the press conference after practice, Mike Vrabel was not in a good mood. Uh, and then Thursday, they canceled practice. And so once we heard the news, it makes sense why Mike Vrabel was not in a good mood. So the media was not allowed to to watch the practice portion where Landry sustained the injury. So my, my question to you to kind of start this conversation, Dr. Stark, is Robert Woods joined the Titans back in the spring as a free agent or through a trade. He tore his ACL in practice with the Rams last year. Now Harold Landry has done it with the Titans. How odd is it for you to see an athlete like this have something happen in a practice where, you know, we know how NFL practices are. They're not full speed. They're not full go, full reaction, but – how, how often do you see these things happen in a practice like this? You know, it, it's it's not uncommon. It's it's pretty often um, most ACL injuries are non-contact. So we're just cutting, uh, cutting drills can do it. Um, they're usually going near full speed. But um, when you add contact, a lot of times we land wrong. So it, it's unfortunately common earlier in the season. Sometimes they're not. Uh, is as ready to go full speed, but uh, of course, um, at this stage, they're the guy, the team's already in going full speed. So anyway, it's 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 too frequent, unfortunately. Yeah, and, for your current. Right. So you're going, you know, near full speed to do this. How much force does it typically take for the ACL to give? So the ACL is about as big around as your small finger, I would okay. say, for most people. It's a pretty big ligament, and it's a lot of force if you try to tear it. They talk about 500 pounds, but it's actually the rate of the force that affects it. Um, and uh, it's a tremendous amount of force. Uh, I think certain people are higher risk than others. So, you know, Harold Landry is a six foot three, 250 pound player. So that's a, who's explosive, right? So that's a, a player who can generate a lot of force, even if he's really not even going close to near full speed. Right. Yeah. And it's kind of joint reaction for us. The foot hits the ground and then the leg, the thigh bone goes over the lower leg. So it's kind of an anterior uh, motion <clears throat> that results in that injury. And a lot of times it kind of an angled motion and rotation a aggravates it. So take us through Dr. Stark, how, like when the ACL goes, like what's, what, why does that ACL pop um, when you see something happen with an athlete? Yeah, it, they studied it and there's really amazing mechanics now that you can kind of essentially uh, track uh, the motion of pre preventing injury, trying to prevent injury and also after injury. But um, the tibia, the lower leg, uh, goes forward relative to the thigh um, as you make a quick motion, usually a stop or cut. And that translation, that moving forward uh, <clears throat> pulls against ACL and that's what causes the injury. Uh, we think if you're more knock kneed or we call valgus force makes it worse. And we think some rotation plays a force, but it's mainly an anterior front motion of that tibia and it pushes through you have so much force. And then once that goes, usually you usually get a bone bruise. And then it's these associated injuries after ACL that really <clears throat> affects rehab and uh, return to sport. Uh, <clears throat> because <clears throat> fortunately, the ACLs do recover after surgery. I mean, once you're treated with surgery, uh, they're nice and strong afterwards. What are some of those other uh, injuries you mentioned <clears throat> that come along with it that might make it more difficult? 
Yeah. So every time you get this, you get a bone bruise. Um, essentially the bone, the ACL goes and the two bones hit together, the femur and tibia that sometimes can damage the cartilage, the gliding cartilage. Those we don't have a good treatment for, even if we try to graft those and then over 65% will get a, uh, meniscus injury. The meniscus usually is more torn off the capsule. So, uh, when I had my meniscus surgery, I had a trim, but most of these will be ones we sew back. Uh, so you have to do a meniscal repair that actually slows down your rehab. And then I'm slower to go back to sport if there's a meniscus damage, because the healing on the meniscus is not as consistent. It doesn't have a very good blood supply of the meniscus. Yeah. I think with Robert Woods, he kind of, when he got traded to the Titans, he talked to the media and mentioned that he had a clean ACL tear. Uh, yeah. And so take us through like a clean one. You don't have a bone bruise. You don't have a meniscus. You don't have any other ligament damage. It, how rare is that? Because I guess, you know, for Titans fans, they're seeing Robert Woods out there in June going through drills pretty quickly after it and hoping, you know, maybe Harold Landry could have had a clean tear as well because they both did it in practice. Maybe no contact there. Yeah. And, and it starts to get worse if two or three people land on you and you land or, or, or uh, the other associated injuries, the MCL, really common. And then if you start really serious, you're talking PCL, the posterior cruciate, MCL being the medial collateral ligament, and then other capsular injuries, a much longer recovery. Um, the the uh, meniscus is un inconsistent healing. So that's the one that you worry about uh, later on having to do some work. Um, <clears throat> the recovery uh, if it's just ACL, you start seeing pretty rapid return to sport. Yeah. And I see uh, somebody here saying, you know, is it possible for Harold to make it back for the playoffs? The playoffs are five months basically away. I, I don't think five months is enough time. And so uh, for Harold Landry, what, what, what do you see the reasonable timeline for a fine tune athlete who tore it? You know, if you want to say basically the very beginning of September, because it was on August 30th, but yeah. toward, you know, early September there for the surgery, at least what's a reasonable timeline for Harold Landry to be, you know, the steps, right? When can he start running again? And then how does that progress? So you feel pretty good at, at it. The ligamentous healing takes three months. You're starting to get good ligament healing, assuming, Everything goes well, <clears throat> no other associated injury, but that strength, getting that quad strength and hamstring strength back equal to where he was is crucial so you don't get other injuries. And for most people, that's six months. So generally kind of, it's great to do six months. There are times that people go back quicker, um, uh, the history of some of the NFL is going back sooner with some possible complications. Think of Jerry Rice way back when, but the uh, going back awful quickly and then breaking his femur. Um, gosh, that, that was a long time. How ago. does the, how does that happen? How do you go back and then break your feet, your femur? Because that's a fear, right? Yeah, As some other injuries. Um, the bone is not as tough uh, just because you haven't loaded it. It's part of it. It also can be from the graft potentially. I don't know his situation, but the um, <clears throat> the graft. You, take a graft, uh, uh, there's graft, different graft choices. And if you take that graft, it can make a weak spot. And that I think is what happened with him, but I'm, I'm not sure about that actually. The, uh, so at four and a half months, you're pretty good. There are people that go back as early as five months and that's really, really pushing it, uh, four and a half to five months. And as a professional player at his level, um, you're probably better off to make sure you're, you're really good. Come back next year. Perfect. Yeah. And so that, you know, That's four, I, five, six months to get back to where you're doing physical activity. But then when it comes to doing and playing your position, those drills that require the torque and the bend and the explosiveness, that's where, you know, several other months afterwards helps build up that strength. Yeah. I've seen the best athletes work four or five hours a, a day and still take seven, eight, where they're at really a playing level uh, that I feel comfortable at it where they're going back. And some of the things we look at is I mentioned some, uh, something called Dorsey V, which is a way to measure a translation of the knee when they're doing single leg hops and jumps. And you do this post-op, of course you're, you progress from jogging. You feel pretty good to jog sometimes as early as two months or three months, but uh, jogging to the to cutting to, to full speed and then contact, but using some of these measurements, it, not only strength, but also <clears throat> translation or motion, you get a better feel of who's really ready and uh, who's not. <clears throat> and so a, a bone bruise, a bone bruise would maybe take you longer to return. 
uh, to jogging. A, a meniscus would also yeah. potentially take you longer to get back to jogging there. A to Z Sports, uh, Bone and Joint Institute, Doc Talk segment talking Harold Landry's ACL tear. We also don't know which knee it is yet. We don't know if there was anything else that came along it with it besides uh, the ACL tear. But we're talking today with Dr. Christopher Stark from the Bone and Joint Institute in Franklin, uh, Tennessee, uh, about this. And I, I do find it interesting because Harold Landry is a guy who – only missed one game through his first four seasons. He played last year 89% of the Titans snaps on defense. So he's going to be hard to replace on the football field. But we did have a question this morning uh, from on our morning show from a viewer. Is there any way this is a wear and tear type of situation because of how many high snaps he played and high percentage of snaps he played? Or is this just something where it's going to happen and it happens and it happens when it does happen? So definitely not wear and tear approach, you know, that happens. We, we see that some in shoulders and some other things, uh, but I think it's a one time. I think certain athletes are much more prone to this than others um, anatomically. And I, I think um, it's a, it can be an awkward or awkward thing, but uh, some people probably are more predisposed to. How do you, how can you like look at an athlete? Cause I'm thinking at, at the NFL combine, when all these athletes are going through everything being poked and prodded, can yeah. you look at an athlete and say, well, based off of his his knees, his ankles, his hips, maybe he's more likely to have an ACL injury down the road? There is information. It's not as consistent as we want it to be. Um, yeah. But the, the valgus knee, which is a little more knock knee, it puts a little more stress. Um, hypermobility. I, I think a lot of the very best athletes are flexible. That's a great thing. It's the ones who can run the 4440 and, and jump, you know, 50. 45 inch vertical. They're not normal and they are, uh, they're a lot of them hypermobile that puts a lot more strain on that ACL. And so you take into account, you can do testing again with these same kind of devices, Dorsey V's example of looking at it, translation and there, we can correlate that with women's athletics. And by teaching them certain motions, you can decrease ACL injuries. We couldn't really do it with boys or men. Um, there's not, good enough correlation, but you, you look at those people and a little more risk. Um, it's a little more common, of course, in the uh, receiver um, and high speed uh, running back, um, quarterback uh, skill position, but a linebacker, uh, they're moving so fast too. Now it's a little less common in the lineman uh, injury. They get more of the MCL where they get a contact injury. Where right. They're rolled, yeah, rolled up on type yeah. of situation there. A to Z sports discussing uh, Harold Landry's ACL tear from Wednesday's practice on a doc talk segment with the bone and joint Institute. Now you bring up Harold Landry, his position and what made, what has made him so good. Uh, he's the only player in the NFL the last three years to have at least 25 sacks and 200 tackles in those three seasons, which is pretty phenomenal the Titans uh -huh. are going to have to replace. But what makes him so dynamic is how he gets around the edge, right? It's the almost motorcycle type lean that he can get to get around an offensive lineman. He typically rushes from the left side of the defense. So his right shoulders on the inside, we don't know which knee it would be, but uh, with this ACL, but do you have an idea of that type of movement, like how he can recover from this and maybe what might hurt him, you know, that first season he's back you know, of getting back to that motorcycle lean? Uh, those are really great questions. The, um, the, uh, the good news on ACLs is they get back and they should get back hundred percent. Like I said, clean ACL. Um, and I, it's stronger than his original ACL. They, they yeah. generally are stronger once they healed up. Um, you can, you know, maybe 50% stronger, 25% stronger. Um, the, you would think the inside leg, the right leg might be yeah. at higher risk where the outside, the way he runs, you would think, of course, it depends if he cut left or right, but you think the right leg would be a little bit more at risk going forward. And then a lot of it, the psychological side, I mean, you cannot under, overstate that it's pretty amazing to see these great athletes and you look at their strength and um you think they're going to be 100 percent, and they're playing at about 80 percent, and it, a lot of it's um confidence and so they have to get that confidence sometimes take a hit or two and get back into it and then they're back 100 percent. um so that's a big part of it um but it should be 100 percent going back that's what you like to see it's many months but yeah the, the good thing nice. is that he tore it august 30th yeah. instead of November 30th. Cause now November 30th starts to bleed into the next season. 
Uh, so out for the year for Harold Landry, what's your, what's your biggest piece of advice that you give to a patient who just had their ACL reconstructive surgery? What do you tell them about what this process is going to be like? Because I, Dr. Arthur, I replaced mine, uh, about 13 years ago at this point, but you know, so that's a, it's a, the mental aspect of going through that recovery is tough. So what do you tell your patients? Yeah, I I try to pump them up a little. It's very discouraging, especially, you know, beginning of the season um, that, Hey, this is just a bump on the road and you're going to get through this. Um, That it's hard work. And the biggest thing I drive home to most, uh, most of my patients and, uh, Mr. Landry probably don't have to worry about as much, but it's work hard. It, it's the time in time out um, seven days a week. And yeah, you go to your therapist or a trainer, but it's on your own and d- don't, d- don't back down. Um, <clears throat> and uh, patience too. Uh, you get too crazy too quick that that backfires. So those are kind of the take home messages. I think. Dr. Christopher Stark of the bone and joint Institute. He knows knees. He knows ACLs. He is a hip and knee replacement and preservation specialist, along with sports medicine at the Bone and Joint Institute. You go check them out, boneandjointtn.org. The website's really easy to use. Whenever you get hurt in life, all you do, you go to the website, boneandjointtn.org. You click make an appointment. You type your name in. You say what's hurting. It sorts to the specialist there, and you make an appointment right there. So appreciate the time today, and I hope you guys have a great weekend. Appreciate it, Austin. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you.